Okay, we're going to move on to the next bit. As you start implementing stuff in Earth Engine, this is going to be your biggest friend and your biggest enemy. Right? The, if you're done programming before, you're going to find it hard to do this because you have to unlearn a lot of the way you think about it. Uh, if you never programmed before, it'll be much easier for you to learn this. Earth Engine uh, will try to say, now, we know how to compute index for one image. Can we do this for every image or for multiple images? And to do this, you need to use MapReduce. So let's just learn about MapReduce. This is a diagram of how Earth Engine works. The blue box is, think about them as Earth Engine server, Earth Engine data centers. You are here. So if you type your code and click Run button, your code gets converted to a request that goes to the Earth Engine servers. The request can come from Python, R, JavaScript. Doesn't matter. As soon as you hit the Run button, it gets converted to an Earth Engine request that gets sent to the server. And the request is not in any of those languages. The request is in the API, the Earth Engine API. And it comes to the servers. It says the user wants to do something. The servers there, think about a Google data center where there are so many machines. Each machine has the Earth Engine software installed. It also has the data in the same data center. So it doesn't have to go out and fetch the data. All the data is right there. It has, the software knows how to compute all of this. The system decides you want this composite image. I will use 100 machines. It will distribute your work across 100 machines. Each machine will do a small tile. It will just say, I will do this one image or one tile. It will find the data for the tile. It will process this. And the other machine will do the neighboring tile and so on. Each tile will be processed independently. The system then collects the results back, saying all the 100 machines give your results back, and your result gets sent to you. So you only get the output. You don't get any intermediate products. Let's say you asked me, uh, you did some analysis, and say, I want to find the surface water area for my country. And you did all your analysis, and you asked for a number. All the analysis will happen here. All you get back is a number. It doesn't send you all the data, all this intermediate results. Right, so it's a very lightweight system. You send your request, the, all the processing happens in the server, and you get the results back. Now, to allow Earth Engine to distribute this computation across many machines, you have to write code so Earth Engine can understand how to distribute this. If you tell Earth Engine, I'll give you 100 images, process them one after the other. Earth Engine will say, OK, the user wants them to do one after the other. I'm tied. I can't do anything. I'll just do them one after the other. So you have to describe your computation that allows Earth Engine to do this in parallel. And that's why you do to write code that allows Earth Engine, to, Earth Engine to distribute this. How do you write the code? Well, you typically start with some collection. Collection of images, collection of features. First step is filter. We've done the filter. You select images, select features that you want to work with. Let's say we found all images for one year for a region. I want to compute NDVI for all of those. I tell Earth Engine, how to do NDVI for one image. Say, I'll write a function that'll take one image, compute NDVI. And then you say, run this command map. This is not the capital map. It's not our map that we look at. This is a big data terminology which says, distribute this function, run this function in parallel across all these images. So you'll say, map this function on my collection. And it says, this will take the name of the function, say, I want to run this function in parallel across all the images. And they'll run this. So if it takes 10 minutes for Earth Engine to compute NDVI for one image, and you have 1,000 images, it'll still take 10 minutes because it'll use 1,000 machines. Right? So wherever you think of for loops in your code, you need to be replacing them with map because map runs in parallel. Once you do this, you have stack of NDVI images. What do you want to do with this? Say, I want to see them on a map. Give me a median composite of NDVI. If you ask for a composite, Earth Engine will take all the pixel values, do some statistical computation, and give you an image. This is called a reduce operation. A reduce operation is typically a statistical operation where you take many values, compute some statistical function. So you take the stack of images. You can do a per pixel median composite with it. You can also ask for a table. Say, I have some polygons. Give me zonal statistics. And it'll give you the statistics within those. You can also ask for a chart. 
and say, give me the time series of NDVI at this location. Right? So now if you say, if your problem is I want to generate a time series chart of NDVI, you need to say, what collection will I use? What filters will I apply? What function will I map on this? And how will I reduce my results? Right? This is how your thought process sh should become. Uh, I'm going to teach you how to do this step by step. But again, most of the learning curve in Earth Engine is you know how to do your remote sensing work. How do you translate this into a filter map reduce process? And once you figure this out, you can implement this and this will run at scale. Okay, let's see how to implement this. Okay, we'll do this. Map, let's learn about map. You can map a function on any of these objects. Anything that has more than one thing. You have a list of things, you have a feature collection, image collection, you can map stuff on it. Yeah, let's see in code, I'm going to drop back into code now. Script 2A, we are now in our admin region. I've selected an admin region. I have the geometry, I've selected bands, and you can see I've found 86 images in a one year over this region. Let's say I want to now compute NDVI for all those, those 86 images. And we want to do this in Earth Engine. If you are doing this in Python, you say, okay, I'll write a for loop for each image, do this. You can write for loops, but if you write for loops, Earth Engine will say, I'll do them one at a time. And you'll, you'll be very sad, it will not work. Right? I do not want to see for loops in any of your code. If you are on the forum, I am the map reduce police, I am the for loop police. If you post any code with for loops or if statement, I'm gonna come back and say, please don't use this, replace it with map, and because that's the most efficient way. Okay, let's see, do this. So we have this collection filtered S2, and I want to compute NDVI for images. The conceptual thinking is, I want to compute NDVI for one image. So first figure out how to do NDVI for one image and then we can map the function. So I'll write one function, say calculate NDVI. This will be a function which will take some image and compute NDVI. Do you know how to compute NDVI for an image? Well, we just learned, right, in the previous script. This is the code. If I have an image, I can just take take the ratio of these two bands and do this. And I can return NDVI. So this function takes our image, returns an NDVI image. I want to now compute NDVI for all this, this 86 images. What do I do? I'll take this collection and do map. So this is the small map, not the capital map. And say map, and the name of the function that you want to map. Done. I have NDVI for all 86 images. Let's see the result. You can see I have this image collection of 86 images. Each image has one band of NDVI. Done, right? That's it. If this was a collection of 10,000 images, it'll just work. So whenever you feel yourself that I want to do something, think about how to do it for one feature, one image, write a function, and then use this map and say, map this over this collection. It'll run in parallel across all of those images. You saw that we had an image, uh, our original images had like 13 bands, right? And we computed an index. We lost all of our 13 bands. If you just, your goal was just to do NDVI, this is fine. But many times you have your images, you say, I want NDVI, I want to do something else. I don't want to lose my original bands. So a more better way to do this is, you can say, instead of returning NDVI, I will say image dot add bands NDVI. This will say, keep my original image all the stuff I had, just create a new band of NDVI and return that.
So you can see my each image now has 14 bands, my original 13 bands plus an NDVI band. Questions on map mapping the function? Yeah, Ujava, like, yeah. So, so over here, I guess the, the question is um, kind of, I guess, why you're doing the filtering before doing the mapping instead of just mapping uh, the NDVI filter, NDI function across everything. You could do this, uh, but again, I don't need to, uh, I don't need to compute NDVI for every Sentinel-2 image. Right? If you do this, and let's say uh, conceptually, let's say I want to, when I have code like this, what happened here? Did Earth Engine compute NDVI or it did not compute NDVI? Any guesses? Earth Engine did not do anything. It says, you have some code, you asked me to do it, but you don't want to see the results. Why should I waste my compute resources? I didn't print it, I didn't add it to the map, Earth Engine did not even compute. So you could do this, for example, you can say s2.map this function and you can filter it, and when you print it, it's the same thing. It'll work because when you're printing it, that's when the computation happens. This is called lazy computation. Earth Engine follows a lazy computation model. You get results only when you ask for it. So you can describe your computation, but only when you print it, see it, that's where the computation will happen. So again, you could do this, uh, but and you also if you want all of S2 images with NDVI, you can do that. Uh, but, but again, I guess the reason why you're doing this filtering, you're, you're basically picking the better images because otherwise you could run NDVI on completely cloudly Im cloudy images, which wouldn't be useful for your time series analysis because the values would just be outliers. Yeah, yeah. So you select the less cloud images, even that doesn't ensure that I have cloud-free pixel at that location. We're gonna fix that as we go on as well. Okay, let's do the exercise 2C. So let me explain the code. We have now mapped this NDVI, this function. I have this function called add indices, which takes an image, computes both NDVI and NDWI, and returns an image with both the indices. We have mapped this on this filtered collection. So now I have a 15 band image, collection of 15 band images. And now I have this, I said, what do I want to do uh, with this? So I want to say, let me do this first thing, right? Let me do this composite. Let me display a map of NDVI for this region. So we do the median composite. We have this collection, median composite. This will give you the median composite of all bands here. And we say, select the NDVI band and display the NDVI composite. So now if what you see on the script is an NDVI map of this admin2 region. This was computed using those 86 images. We computed, for each image, we computed NDVI and then we say, give me the median value and display a map of that. Right? Your exercise is to change the admin region to whatever region you're working with. And we also have an NDWI band. So go and display the map of NDWI for your admin region. So select, instead of selecting the NDVI, select the NDWI band, find a nice palette from Color Brewer and display that on the map. Okay, try this out. This is exercise 2C in part two. Yes, it's an image. What you get is an image at the end. Composite is an image. Write an export function and you can download that. The same way we did the last script in our part one, you can just say export image to drive and give this NDVI composite, you can export that. I once was invited to give a talk at uh, a government agency and they had a wall map of NDVI for that state. And they were very proud of it. Like, look at this NDVI map that we did. And then they saw the script and it's like, oh, we wasted six months creating this map, whether we could have just done this and exported this, right? So a lot of those kind of data processing is now very trivial to do. But, but I think it goes back to what you were talking about earlier that like even you know 10 years ago or so, 
I, and I've seen it on Twitter as well, where somebody was like, oh, I downloaded you know, these 30 Sentinel images and I want to do X thing and blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, why don't you just do it in Earth Engine? And it's like, no, no, you don't understand. I want to do it on my desktop. And it's like, why would you? So it's kind of like the things that, you guys, that, that everybody in here that you're doing, it might seem like, oh, look, Ujaval made it look quick or whatever. But if you had to replicate this in a desktop environment, it would just take so much time. Like at least I remember, you know, when I started doing remote sensing, you know, 2004, et cetera, like one Landsat scene would take us like one hour to download. So just download it one hour. And then when you run that scene on your, on your computer, how much time to do this stuff? Of course, Ujaval, you know, basically snaps his fingers and you see all of this, but behind it, it's, you know, some powerful computation and not just that, that Google is also providing it basically free of, free of use to, to all of us, you know, within their, their limitations, no? So... I don't know, at least I'm, I'm thankful for uh, Ujaval for showing us, you know, the things in his bag of tricks that, again, might make this stuff seem really simple, but ultimately behind it, it's some really complicated stuff. And the point here is that you should not be spending your time doing this. Now you can do this in five minutes. So next time you're doing research, spend the six months figuring out how can I improve this or what new things can I do. Right? Most of the, you know, if you do a master's thesis 10 years ago, it was like, downloading processing data and then you spend one week doing something instead now you say i will just have this data what innovative things i can do and that's where you should be spending your effort so once you learn this you'll be freed to actually do the research and kind of do something new instead of just doing data processing i'm going to just uh, show you how to do this if you've done this that's fine i'll do ndwi Again, you can see the best practice is to only clip when you're displaying it. I'm doing it at the very end. Till then, I'm just working with the full images. You can now see the, the map of water bodies in this region. Time's up, I'm gonna move on. In the interest of time, I want to uh, make sure we finish on time. Uh, at the current pace, we might take 10 more minutes after 4 p.m., uh, but hopefully I'll try to wrap up soon. 